All right, we're gonna be palpating the muscle known as temporalis. Just rotating your head to the side as I'm cupping it with my other hand for support. And I'm gonna start by outlining its origin, which is known as the temporal fossa. So what I'm gonna start by finding here is the zygomatic arch, and I'm gonna go right up against the side of the orbit here. So we have the zygomatic bone and a process called the frontal process, which is meeting with the frontal bone here. And if we roll just posterior off of that, this is the beginning of our temporal fossa. So above the zygomatic arch, posterior to the frontal process of the zygomatic bone. And I'm gonna get my partner here to clench her teeth for me. Good. And I'm gonna move up and you're actually able to feel a ridge. So just over top of where I was, deep to my fingers would be known as the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. And as I move superiorly, I'm now on the frontal bone and I'm gonna be moving posterior from there. Can you please clench your teeth again? And I'm basically just tracing my fingers along a light ridge known as the temporal lines. So these lines span from frontal bone, they move posteriorly along the parietal bone. So I'm gonna have her clench her teeth again, good. And they go back posterior to the ear. Clench your teeth again for me. Good, I'm just gonna move your hair out of the way above your ear. And they just start to drop down just above the ear. So we've gone now onto the temporal bone. If you can, again, clench your teeth for me. So there's actually four bones that make up the temporal fossa, the sphenoid, the frontal, the parietal, and the temporal. So this whole area here is known as the temporal fossa. And this muscle is originating in here with some of its fibers running straight up and down and a bunch of its fibers running from more posterior heading anterior. The muscle is gonna go underneath or deep to this zygomatic arch and they're gonna insert onto the coronoid process of the mandible. Now the coronoid process is often not palpable with a closed mouth because it's actually tipped up underneath the zygomatic arch and it doesn't stick out until the person opens their mouth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna palpate the ramus, which I'm doing right now. I'm gonna drop off the front anterior part of the ramus right below that zygomatic arch. And I'm gonna ask her to slowly open her mouth for me and my finger's getting lifted and pushed off by this coronoid process right there. And when she closes her mouth, it disappears up underneath the arch. So again, one more time, nice and gently open your mouth. So it inserts onto the top of this coronoid process, both internally and a little externally, and a little bit of the ramus of the mandible. So again, our fiber direction runs like so, and therefore it's gonna start to elevate and retract the mandible at the temporal mandibular joint. So the origin, big, broad muscle belly, Lots of treatment over top of the side of the skull here, and then the insertion onto the superior part of the mandible. Uh, the temporalis as well as the masseter are both innervated by the mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve. All right, so we're gonna be palpating the muscle known as masseter. So I'm just having her head turned to the side as I'm supporting with my other hand, and I'm palpating along her zygomatic arch. So kind of the zygomatic bone of the cheek here, and then this posterior process on it is named for the bone that it attaches to, which is the temporal bone. So the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And as we get on to this temporal bone, it has a process reaching forward, which is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. Those two processes turn into what is known as the zygomatic arch. So once I've palpated the zygomatic arch, I'm actually just gonna roll off inferior, and this is the origin of the masseter. So masseter has two bellies, an external and an internal and we're really not gonna be able to distinguish the two of them since they're both originating on this arch. They're just a little bit uh, different length and slight different fiber direction. I'm gonna have you just clench your teeth together for me. Good, and relax. 
So this muscle is going to be traveling down. So I'm kind of in the anterior and posterior borders of this masseter and it's starting to insert already, but the bulk of the muscle is gonna go all the way down towards the bottom here. So as I sink in, we're starting to attach on the ramus and a little bit of the coronoid process. And then it attaches all along the outer surface of the ramus of the mandible, all the way down to the angle of the mandible here, like so. So origin, both components of it, and then the bulk of the muscle belly, all the way down to the insertion at the bottom. Just be careful and take caution that as you're palpating through this, um, your parotid gland or parotid gland is going to be superficial to this muscle. So you don't want to push too hard. And if you are going to be doing some treatment in this area, take your time to warm up before you just push with a lot of pressure in this area. So the masseter is going to be innervated by the trigeminal nerve.